I found this uh, okay business in India, which I thought was going to become a better business. People haven't heard of, about it, it's kind of unknown. And I told Guy, this business, this quirky unknown business, is going to be a great investment. Great investment. And I told him, so he owned, uh, he owned MasterCard in his portfolio. MasterCard is a very good business. Very high quality, you know, almost a oligopy, two, three players own the market. They don't need any capital to run the business. I mean, like 40% of revenue is profit. It's a great business. I said, this MasterCard is like at 30 times earnings. You made a lot of money. He already made like 12 times what he put in, bought it a long time back. He put 1 million, it became 12 million. So I said, you made a lot of money. It's not going to go from 12 million to 144 million. You know, if the last 12 years it went from 1 million to 12 million, let me just tell you, next 12 years it's not going from 12 to 144. So I said, Guy, listen, I shook him up. It's time to sell MasterCard and buy SunTech Realty in Mumbai, okay? This unknown company. And of course, Guy, in polite terms, told me, get lost. So, you know, what I do when people do that is I like to play mathematical games. You know, it's just fun to play mathematical games. This is a picture of a, of a, a small poster in my office. And I have many of these. At any given time, I have maybe um, 10 of these. Because I run into these humans who don't understand the concept of great investment and great company. So I told Guy, OK, here's what we're going to do. It is October 14th, 2018. This is when I had this conversation with him. In your corner is the phenomenal MasterCard with the impregnable moat, oligopy business, great CEO, everything is fantastic. And that's called the Guy Spear pick. At that time, MasterCard was $204 a share. In my corner, this small, stupid company in Mumbai, SunTech Realty, no one even heard of it, right? And MasterCard, the market cap was 212 billion, okay, 212 billion. It's a blue chip company. SunTech is less than 700 million. It's, it is absolutely, I agree with Guy, the guy running SunTech is not as good as the guy running MasterCard. The moat of MasterCard is a lot better than the moat of SunTech. But that's not what this contest is about. This contest is about, I, I gave him 12 years. So I said, we're not going to like have a one-year contest because anything can happen one year. Because basically one of the things that Munger and Buffett say that if you have a business with great economics, great economics, over the long term, your results will match the returns that the business generates over the long term. So MasterCard generates great returns. And I said, Guy, you've got such a great company. I got this useless company. We're gonna go for 12 years. And every year, now when it is October 13th, 2019, it'll be a pleasure to go to work in shorts and send Guy an email. Dear Guy, it has been one year. Here's where we stand so far. One round is over. Another 11 rounds to go. So let's look a little further in these, in these two businesses. Look at that. This is MasterCard. If you bought MasterCard at the IPO, when it IPO'd in 2006, it was $4.23. In the IPO in 2006. 
And now, yesterday, it's $254. More than 50 times, maybe 55 times, in 13 years. Unbelievable. And Guy didn't even buy over here. I think he bought at maybe around $20 a share, maybe somewhere here. 2009, 2010, somewhere here he bought. And every time I meet Guy, I tell Guy, Guy, have we sold MasterCard? No. I cannot sell MasterCard. It's too precious. Precious. Can I sell it? How can I sell it? Look at this. Can you sell this? You can't sell this. Okay. And then we have uh, just some data. Okay, so it's 261 billion market cap. The trailing PE is 42. I'm almost having like a cardiac, 42 times trailing PE. Trailing return on equity is 106. We give you all the slides. You don't need to take pictures, don't worry. I send you all the slides. Uh, trailing return on equity, 106%. And annualized return since the IPO, 37%. Unbelievable, great. But that's in the past. It's not gonna help Guy in the future. We care about the future, we don't care about the past, right? So, now here's SunTech. Look at the stupid chart, okay? MasterCard, so beautiful. SunTech, so useless, okay? Now, let me tell you why I don't want to make this session about stock tips. So don't think this is stock tip. It's just to explain some concepts, okay? So in, in India about three years ago, uh, there was something that uh, known as demonetization that took place. Uh, some of you may be familiar with it, but what the government did is they made a bunch of currency notes illegal and you had to put those in a bank and then get different notes because they wanted to wipe out uh, cash transactions and black money and all these things. You know, there's an underground economy, they want to kill that. So real estate transactions in India in 2016 and earlier, they were always some portion paid by check and some portion under the table cash. It's a combination, right? When, when demonetization, demonetization took place, um, it became impossible to pay cash because the cash is all illegal. So what happened is the real estate firms, most of them, they dealt in a lot of cash. And so people thought, oh, the real estate market is just clobbered. It's gone because you can't, now you, you don't have, people don't have the money. You know, they can't come up with money from the banks. And so I noticed that in uh, November or December of 2016, that these real estate companies that were publicly traded had collapsed in value because of this thing. But the people forgot something when they did that. So if you look at that circle, when Suntech was trading about 100 rupees a share. One could do a very simple exercise at that time. I could look at the real estate Suntech owned, because it was just listed, what they own. They had a bunch of finished apartments, they have in construction, they have land, all these things. Those have a valuation, either a market value or a cost value. And this was a company there were few companies that never dealt in cash. They always did things the right way. And so before demonetization, it was a disadvantage to them because people would try to tell them, no, I cannot do this if you don't do cash. They said, we can't do any other way. We have to do everything properly. After demonetization, what happened is that 90% of the real estate companies disappeared. They can no longer function in that economy. So there were three things that took place in India in real estate. Demonetization, something known as RERA, Real Estate Regulatory Act, and GST, Goods and Services Tax. The combination of these three, the end result was that 
90% of the developers were out of business. And very, very few developers were left standing. The ones that were left standing were the ones that always conducted their affairs with very high quality. You know, they delivered the, the properties, they did everything by the rules, they followed everything. Suntech was one of them. And so, at that time, when the stock was at about 100, the market value of the company was less than $200 million. Just one project that they had, where they had 60 finished apartments in the heart of Mumbai, uh, those apartments were worth about $500 million. There's no debt. So the market cap is $200 million. They have 25 projects. One project is $500 million. Okay, they are another 24. So when I started to look at the value of everything they had, it was many times the value of the stock. There's no comparison. And reason why is that because people, when there is a, a seismic event like this demonetization, they just run to the exit. Everyone just sell the stock and run, right? So the stock is sitting there, no one's interested. I am interested. I tell the broker, every share, anyone who has any shares, just buy as much as you can, okay? And now we own 9.999%. That's the maximum I'm allowed to own. So the maximum that I could buy, I bought. One tenth of the company we own. And you can see what happened after that is in the, la in the last three years, it went up almost five times. It went from 100 to almost 460, close to 500, right? And um, in fact, I'm not even doing the contest with Guy from 2016. I'm not using that 100 rupee price against MasterCard. I'm using a price when it's already gone up quite a bit. So if I go back, I'm not using 100, I'm using 355, right? So it's already gone up quite a bit. But I said, you know, guy, even with the 355, we'll kick MasterCard's card's ass, no problem, okay? And uh, I'm hoping that in five or seven years, he will understand what is already obvious to all of you. So there's Suntech. These are the numbers. The market cap is now close to a billion. Uh, trailing PE looks high 30 times. ROE is low. The returns since the IPO, I don't care about. But the return since demonetization, which is when we invested for the first time, is 400%. And the annualized return since then is about 95%. And, uh, and here's where we stand today. So we started October 18th. Until today, MasterCard is up 25%, pretty good. From October to May, 25%. SunTech is up 38%. Okay, so far, Monish is ahead. Well done, Monish, so far. But we have 11 and a half years left to go. 11 and a half years. Now, let me just tell you something else about MasterCard. Buffett invested in Coca-Cola. He bought Coca-Cola stock for the first time. And from 1988 till 2000, it went up like 12 or 14 times. It went up a lot. They, they put about 1.2 billion, was worth like almost 15 billion. Very nice one. From 2000 onwards, when, so Coke was very cheap, it, by 2000 it was trading at 40 times earnings. From 2000 to 2018, Coke delivered a return of less than 3% a year. Okay? Why did it deliver a return of 3% 3, 3 a year? It's still a great company. The Chinese love Coke. You love Coke? There you go. Okay, so Coke has a global footprint. It does well everywhere. The bottling business is separate. It makes a lot of money. The return on equity is great. Just like MasterCard, it's a great business. But the thing is, the starting price that you pay matters. In 2000, you were paying more than 40 times earnings for that business. 
And by 2018, it's trading at 17 times earnings. So the multiple went from 40 to 17. Okay, so MasterCard actually, in my opinion, is not as, as good a business as Coke. Why is it not as good a business? Because it is subject to disruption. You know, in China, no MasterCard. Do you guys use MasterCard in China? No, wiped out, not allowed to come in. Okay, and the, the payment systems in China are way more advanced compared to MasterCard and they're much cheaper, the frictional cost is much low. MasterCard gets 2% on every transaction, 2%. In 2030, I don't know whether they will get 2%. You know what I'm saying? So now if I go to my favorite stock, Mao Tai. Do we love Mao Tai? Yes, absolutely. What a company. The ultimate moat I can't think of another company which has a better moat than Mao Tai. Okay, can Mao Tai be disrupted? How can Mao Tai's business collapse? What would cause the business of Mao Tai to collapse? So we know if I compare MasterCard to Mao Tai, MasterCard can collapse. Mao Tai is very, very hard to collapse because of a thousand year history and it's embedded in people's heads and they have uh, so much inventory and you know, the thing is it's got all the brand cachet, China is rising, all of those things, there are a lot of tailwinds that keep coming, they can keep raising the price. You know, just keep raising the price. So the thing is that uh, Mao Tai, phenomenal mode. So MasterCard, one of the issues is that payment systems it may be possible that in 2030, MasterCard is still doing fine, possible. It's also possible MasterCard in 2030 is not doing fine, right? We don't know. So anyway, my way of dealing with this is play a game, okay? Let's play a game. And uh, uh, I could never get Guy to buy even one share of SunTech even after the contest started, everything. 